What's wrong with Mike? What's wrong is I got duped by an edible. And I sure as hell wish they were labeled better. This should take about 25 minutes. You know, I'm a chemist by trade. That makes me into a label reader. At least for me. I like reading labels on the stuff that's going to go on my body. I'm very interested. I'm in my 50s now. I'm trying to make sure my health is optimum. And I want to be careful what goes in there. One time I was reading a tube of Preparation H and... You know, you look at the active ingredient, shark liver oil, which to me kind of begged the question, like, what chain of events led to that discovery? You know, like, I, I'm a pretty imaginative person, but I can't really envision the scenario in which the oil from a shark's liver would come into contact with the human ass. I don't really think it's kind of this sort of Reese's peanut butter kind of thing, you know, where the, hey, one guy's walking down the sidewalk with some shark liver oil in a jar, and there's another person walking the other direction with his ass, and they kind of bump into each other and like, hey, you got your ass in my shark liver oil. And then like, well, you got your shark liver oil in my ass. And you know what? It's soothing and shrinking my piles. I don't think that's how it went down. When I was a kid, smart labeling came out. I want to say it was in the 90s even. You know, I was a wrestler in high school and college. So, you know, you're, you're always worried about your, your macros, man. You have to cut weight so you can be bigger. Now they kind of frown on that people die cutting too much weight but we did some really crazy stuff and you you ended up learning about nutrition sort of as a side benefit and you know I, I i started caring about nutrition i cook for myself and when they started labeling things it was one of the very few things the government did that was just really good so you go back into history Supposedly, the ancient Egyptians didn't have any way of vetting their food quality. And so these sort of oligarchs, or I think I'm using the right term, elites, would have specialized food tasters. And the people would taste the food, and they just wait 24 hours like some sort of canary in the coal mine to see if they died. And if they didn't, then, hey, okay, that food is good, what we're what we're going to eat, and I guess they kind of knew what they were doing. I'm not sure the Egyptians came up with the food pyramid, though. Someone get on that. Are those the guys who came up with the food pyramid? And how was it built? You know what I wish, and I, I like the labeling system we have in this country. You know, I always, I, one thing that, you know, like, for example, here I am, with a 32-ounce container of Clamato. Clamato. Tomato cocktail. And you can look on there and you can be like, where's the clam? And it's towards the end. Dried clam broth. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, later on today, I'm going to go for my run, maybe die from heat. But if I don't, I'm going to try pouring a big tall can of beer into some clamato and reading the label i don't think i'm doing anything too bad by myself eh, i'd like the potassium to be a little higher i wish the potassium to sodium ratio was you know potassium greater than sodium but what are you going to do it's clamato let me give it a try why am i going to pour a beer into it because they sell beer with clamato and i want to try it on my own you you say, hey, you just buy that. Well, I want to, you know, what I want to do it artisanally. It's an artisan kind of approach to it. And I don't even know where artisa is. Where is artisa? Anyhow, but you know what really kind of threw me is they stopped putting vitamin C 
on there. They don't have to label vitamin C. They don't have to label vitamin C or vitamin A anymore. They replace that with potassium and vitamin D. And I guess the rationale is that there's more deficiencies of vitamin D and vitamin uh, uh, the potassium. And I love potassium. Potassium is great in its ionic form. But I, I really miss not seeing the vitamin C. I'd always look at it. You know, you always, okay, because I know this, this clamato, it's got number one ingredient, water. Number two is tomato concentrate. You know that's got some vitamin C in it, man. So that was kind of hard for me to swallow when they switched that around. For me, that was kind of like when UCLA and USC joined the Big Ten. I'm like, come on, guys. Keep it. There's room enough on the label for everybody. Just make it one big to keep vitamin C and vitamin A on there so I can keep looking at things and feeling good when I pour alcohol into it that at least I'm helping myself. My other favorite beverage is I take and make a Bloody Mary, but I use V8 juice. Speaking of alcohol, <clears throat> and you know what, another thing, how is Cincinnati in the Big 12 now? What the hell? Speaking of alcohol, I wish they did that. Um, a little more. I, w I wish alcoholic beverages were labeled. Like, here's the here's thing. I'm holding vitamin water. And I don't think they have to tell you caffeine. But it's nice. They tell you all these vitamins and stuff. And they do put vitamin C on here. 100% um, of your vitamin C, which they don't have to label. That's just voluntarily, I assume. Pantothenic acid, vitamin B. You know, you see you got some B vitamins. Niacin. <clears throat> Where's the riboflavin? I don't think riboflavin is potassium. Ooh, it's got like a cross. You know, that's not good, right? People died on those things. So, you know, you got like potassium, nothing. And there's a little thing, not significant source of vitamin D, fiber, calcium, all these other things. And it's just got a little cross. That's not good. But, okay. I think the FDA in this particular case... You could say it's your friend with the labeling. Mm, okay, maybe it's not your friend, but it's kind of like that person that you work with that you have to tolerate, and if they called in sick, your job would be tougher. So this, this labeling of food is great. I just wish they did it with things like edibles and things like stuff with alcohol. Oh my goodness. There used to be this stuff called Sparks. I don't know what the hell was in that stuff, but it was delicious. It came in a little 16-ounce kind of can, right? And you'd go down to the convenience store, and uh, you'd grab one, and you'd drink it. And I, I would feel amazingly buzzed. I don't know what kind of sugars were in that thing. I don't know if there was caffeine in it. But I would feel like I'd want to go drive golf balls at airplanes, I would have that much energy with a buzz, alcohol buzz plus energy. Man, I wish they labeled that. They should. Why can't every single alcoholic container tell you if how many added sugars there are, if there's caffeine in it especially? Because, you know, for me, I, people have said if I did cocaine, I would explode. I don't really need caffeine in my alcohol. When I was in college, we made rum and jolt, and we'd put it in a big, huge cistern with a little, you know, kind of faucet at the end, and we would make rum and jolt, and we would bounce off the walls and, and um, go climb construction sites. That's what we would do. Steal fire extinguishers and get in fights with them. That's why I need to know if my alcohol has caffeine in it. And I'll tell you what, back when Sparks was around, and why did it disappear? I don't know if it was market forces or the fact that every time I watched Cops, that TV show, or some other incarnation of Cops, every shirtless white male had drank about three sparks. Those are the guys who always get arrested, by the way, the ones without a shirt on. They should just profile for that. Heck with skin color. Just go for the guy without a shirt. So what does this have to do with the clickbaity title of edibles? Well, 
Let me grab this. A friend gave me... Okay, so, I don't want to get anybody in trouble here. A friend went to the Indian Reservation in upstate New York and bought me some Skittles. And right now, and it, by the way, I don't know if it's my age, but there's a point where you just really appreciate nice packaging. And they give you this little discreet, like, pouch. I guess this was what was handed to me. And I don't know. I think it was 50 bucks. And uh, this nice little pouch is very opaque, and you can't see. It's got a little zip, and it, just a nice little pouch, okay? And I'm going to keep it forever because it's such a nice container. And I'm turning into my father. Damn it. So you look at this, and this is what it says. Medicated wild berry Skittles. Now, I know Skittles has had some racy ads, and they took some chances, and I don't want to get into that because it's got an ad. If you look up Dirty Band Skittles ad, it's got uh, a parody of two people doing that shameful act, which should, of course, just be for procreation. And it's it's kind of like one of those dirty, dirty, wrong movies. It was kind of parodying that with Skittles. I don't think they did this because I'm looking at this label and it doesn't say where the hell it's from. It doesn't say it was from like the blank, blank candy company. It just says medicated Skittles. It does say that it has 20 milligrams THC per little candy thing. And when you look at them, it doesn't have an S on it. It looks like it came out of somebody's kitchen. All right. So I opened one up and I... Uh, and I had these Skittles, and I was kind of like, cool. I want to diversify my portfolio a little bit. At the time, a, a, a few years ago, I had kind of nasty anxiety. Claustrophobic kind of anxiety. I think it might have been some sort of PTSD. I don't know. Somebody told me at once it was male menopause. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, you could just explain anything as male menopause, I guess, if you just said, okay, I have anxiety, you know. But it's going away pretty well, and I think uh, I had problems driving on crowded freeways, and I had problems even being in a line with people behind me and in front of me or in, um, in like, uh, in, in closed areas. And so I thought CBD oil would help with that. It totally didn't. And my friend told me that maybe I need to mix in some THC with that because alcohol works for sure, all right? But this isn't, I would like if this bag, not only the 20 milligrams, I would like to know where the hell they're made, right? Like, like look, here's, a, here's a, some roasted seaweed snacks. And yeah, I can look at all the nutrition information, but I can use and impart my own racism to, to make judgment and say, okay, where was it made, right? It was made in Korea. Seaweed snacks made in Korea. That sounds about right. That makes me feel good. If, if it was, you, you read that it was some landlocked country that I'm not going to mention, I guess, because I'll probably get in trouble, but I, I wouldn't feel as good about it when I feel, you know, I see, hey, Korea, by the way, they should say South Korea, but I guess they say Korea because you just know it isn't coming from the other Korea. So I feel good. Hey, seaweed snacks from Korea. Yeah, I dig it. They do They do the seaweed. How about like if there's like food dye? I mean, there's food dye in these things. I have a friend. If he eats yellow food dye, no, red food dye, he's like, I'm going to go to the hospital. If I have red food dye, I'm going to go to the hospital. How, how about if, you know, like how do we know? I'd be like to know. Not just how many milligrams. I'd like to know how many milligrams of THC, but how many milligrams of sugars. I'd like to know um, if there's F, D, and C, yellow number five. What the hell happened to F, D, and C, yellow number one through four? You know, that wasn't a good story, whatever that's worth. So, you know, I, I, I started thinking, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the equivalent of the Egyptian food taster with myself, because... Had people say these are edibles, you could take them, and they just, I've never had them work on me. And, and I've had, I've talked to people who say, yeah, edibles don't work on me. So I'm like, okay, that's kind of weird. Why would it not work on you? So this is what I was doing. 
On the weekends, I go for a long run. Getting kind of difficult in the heat here, but I mean, I'd go long on a on a Sunday. And so I'd do like a seven, eight mile run. And my plan was that it'd be pretty cool if I took a half a Skittle, because I don't know how many milligrams I can handle. If I could take a half a Skittle and then just kind of pop it halfway through my run, because I know it takes time to digest, they say that. And so then, right when I'm done with my run, I could, like, have the runner's high and then the THC high. Because apparently one high isn't good enough for me. But I also thought it might help with muscle tension, help me be looser as I go along. I don't know. I wonder if that's just a really, you're not really looser muscularly and tendinally and, uh, um, that's probably not a word, tendinally. But if your muscles and tendons, and what are the other things? They were all looser. I think you basically are just blinded to pain is what's going on. Yeah, my hip doesn't hurt, but you're probably still hurting it because you're numbifying yourself. So, so I would do this on my run. I did it a couple times. Nothing. One time I'm like, well, hell, all right. I took half of one halfway through my run. It's an hour later. I'll take another half of half of one. Nothing. So one day I'm like, okay, I'm going to take a whole one in one sitting. See what happens. It was a Saturday night. I didn't have any social engagements. I was probably too lazy to be doing any writing. I um, didn't have a gig I was just like, I'm, this is a pretty good time. I'm just going to sit around and I'm going to take a whole Skittle. And I did. Hour goes by, nothing. So I'm like, well, this sucks. I'm pretty sure these Skittles are fake. They don't have any THC in them. So I'm like, I'm going to go to Kroger. You know, it's funny, R- Regork, Kroger, whatever you want to call it. It's kind of like my grounding place. It's like where I go to. So now that I'm walking more and I'm working less because I just entered the retirement system, I'm, I'm, my thing is to walk to Kroger, and I've highly documented that, that I do that. It's about a four-mile round trip. It's what I do now. And, and, and then when something happens and plans change, I just I go to... It's like my little grounding place or something. I don't get it. About a month and a half ago, I kind of got kicked off a of stage because I went over my time, and I was supposed to come back for another set, and I was like, you know, I'm going to go to Kroger. i got to pick stuff up. And I was, my, my feelings were a little hurt, you know, because I was like, just kind of had that little pit in my stomach. And I'm like, i got to pick some stuff up. Eggs are on sale. So I'll go to Kroger. So, okay, I take this whole edible. Nothing happens. I go to Kroger, and it kicks in right when I walked through the door. It was like, I, it was a time of the year when it was dark already. And so as soon as those doors open, just like, bring, it hits me. And it was like a high, like a weed high, but also like a body kind of tingly high. And I'm like, damn. This... This really just overwhelmed me. And so I'm like, I better do my shopping, you know, and I didn't have a huge list of things to do, but I go by and I do my rounds and I go by the bakery section and this, (laughs) I, I have to laugh during this because it's still so funny. And I don't know if I can describe it to you. And I know this is an audio only podcast, but I can't describe it to you in in visual terms. I mean, I'm Italian. I talk with my hands, but I can't make this experience the same for you as it was, but I'll try my best. This lady pulled out this shelf of like, um, bagels and like the shelf got pulled out too far. I wasn't really sort of anchored well. And all these bagels just trickled down her leg, collected at her feet while I was walking by And there's just this kind of like pile of 10 bagels at her feet. And she looks up and the first thing she looks at is me right in the eyes. 
And she had this kind of expression on her face like, and then, you know, in any other circumstances, I would say, oh my goodness, let me help you. And this is maybe why edibles aren't that great. I, it didn't make me into a very good citizen. Because what I did is I turned away and started laughing so hard that it's kind of like the laughing you have in church where you have to stifle it and it makes it even worse. It was that kind of laughing. So I kind of went, I, I, you know, I, you know, I kind of pivoted my right foot, went left to produce. And then um, I'm in the produce section and I cannot stop laughing. And I'm trying to stifle it and my, I'm crying because that sight of the lady with her bagels and just a look on her face of like, oh, like her, seeing her mouth turned down was so damn funny. And now I'm stifling it and tears are coming down my face and people in produce are starting to look at me like that guy is sobbing. Because I was. I was literally st- <laughs> like crying so hard because of this little event. And so then I'm like, shit. People in produce are on to me. They, they think I'm crying. And I am, but they think I'm sad. And one of them's going to come over and try to console me. And I don't want that. So then I'll go to that part of Kroger where no one goes. It's like in the corner. They used to have furniture there. It's kind of like, you know, the Island of Misfit Toys. It's kind of that. As a matter of fact, it is the Island of Misfit Toys. It's kind of the toy section. No one's in the toy section at Kroger. So I book ass over there and I use it to try to hide. But then it's like there's a guy following me. And I keep looking, kind of like back when I used to race bicycles. You know, you could take a quick peek, look back, and use the periphery to see if there's a body or a bike behind you. Just snatch a look back, and he's following me. So I duck down an aisle, and he's following me there. And the bottom line, he wasn't following me. He was just putting shit back on the shelf. But I'm like, this guy's following me. So then I go to the Island of Misfit Toys. And finally, I'm like, I got to get out of here. I'm going to get a few things. Instead of like, I'll just knock out a couple things on the list. And the amount of foot traffic and steps I put in to gather those three or four things was like four or five fold what it normally would have been because I was so inefficient stopping at different things. I finally stopped the tears from flowing. So then this, I'm not proud of this, but I had to get home. So I drove home and I'm buzzing hard. And I come to this red light. I go through it all the time. I mean, I I stop at it all the time and I'm sitting there and it's glowing red. And I'm thinking to myself, like this red light is broken it hasn't changed and so i'm like i wonder if i should run it and i know no 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 i'm not gonna run it here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna wait for it forever and i'm gonna wait until somebody comes up next to me and they witness that the red light is broken and then we can both agree together that maybe Somebody will there be a huge pile of people waiting for the red light to change. And so then we can all agree that legally we kind of have to run it together. And I'll have sort of an alibi and all my contemporaries who arrive at the red light. And maybe, you know, this is the plan. I'm going to wait and just stall for like 20 minutes until I get a whole bunch of people. And now we have a cohort and we can all run the light Maybe even someone could get out and direct traffic. Well, finally, the red light changes. And I just realized, like, because of the place, you know, and the the song I was listening to, that it really wasn't broken at all. It was, like, just normal. It just seemed that way. And so I get home safely. And I'm I'm trying to tell my wife what's going on. And I can't get it out. 
like all I can come up with is this lady, and I can't get past these two words. This lady, I can't stop. I I finally about an hour later, I just talked about how a lady dropped her bagels, and I'm and I'm getting the look like that's not that funny. And it, maybe it wasn't, but just in the moment, I mean, I couldn't stop laughing. I mean, my gut hurt. The next day, I strained stomach stomach muscles because of this. And so now, I guess I know what's coming next time. I haven't touched those Skittles since then. And it's been a while. It's been more than a year, I think. By the way, it was on a weekend, so I didn't have the effect of it when I went to work. Not that it matters, because they can't fire me anymore. Um, <clears throat> so I think, in conclusion, yes, these things should be labeled a little bit better, especially alcohol. Um, but also, next time, I'm going to go ahead and walk to Regork. And maybe I might hire an Egyptian food taster. Thanks for listening. Have a question for Mike? Email him at mikecanistero at icloud.com. Bye-bye.